This is our, our boat, boat pivot. pivot. You have seen lots of Pivot in many of our videos, but never an in-depth tour like this one. Pivot is a 1989, 34-foot long marine trader double cabin. She has a 12 and a half foot beam and a three and a half foot depth. In this video, we're gonna be going through all the details and kind of showing you the features that make her an excellent Great Loop boat. And this video is different than our previous boat tour that was very, basic, top of the level. This goes into a lot of the nitty gritty stuff. Let's get started. Oh, and we are giving this tour from a very special location here in one of the top freshwater anchorages in the entire world. The in Benjamin the, Islands. In the North Channel. The water is so crystal clear. It's been raining on and off today. Ollie's just having a blast with rocks. She's having probably the time of her life. And what a better location to showcase Pivot. Starting off our pivot tour, we must first come to Fred. Fred is an 11 foot long West Marine inflatable dinghy. We have our e-propulsion Spirit Plus 1.0 electric outboard and we have two batteries for this. We absolutely love it. It is so quiet, like just insane. And it's pretty fast too. Fast is relative, but yeah. Well, it's trawler speed, you know. Pivot has a teak deck for the swim platform where we have a swimming ladder, which we tie up and we're underway. And we have a ladder just for getting on board. It makes leaving on the dinghy and coming back on the dinghy super easy. We are going to give this tour of Pivot from top to bottom and from back to front. So let's start with our flybridge. We have these two ladders that help you get up to the flybridge, both with handholds. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term flybridge, it refers to this area on the top of the boat. Typically with really good visibility, the bridge is kind of the commanding area of the boat, so that's that term. The fly, I'm actually not quite sure where that comes from, but this is the area that we cruise in for good visibility. And the most aft part of our flybridge, we have our mast. This is where our anchor light goes. We also have a WeBoost cell phone uh, booster antenna. So that helps with a lot of the digital work that we do on board, giving our one bar three or four bars, which is fantastic. We also have some more lightings. Since we're in Canada, we have our courtesy flag up, the Canadian flag on the starboard spreader and our type of boat configuration, that's where it goes. Right here are our winch handles. So these are what we use to raise and lower our dinghy, which we do all the time on the loop. You know, sometimes twice a day, depending on how many stops we're making. This system of we have one that lowers and raises the boom, and the other one which lowers and raises our wire on the boom, and that's does everything we need it to do. We've gotten it down to where it takes about five minutes to drop and lower Fred, which is pretty decently fast. Um, it definitely is a decent workout, though, uh, pulling these up. And we've kind of figured out ways so it doesn't make a lot of noise, but it works. Now, in a few weeks, when we come through Chicago, we're gonna have to lower this mast. So we've never done that before. So make sure you guys are subscribed to see how you figure that out. Coming over here in the aft port quarter of the flybridge, this is our propane tank. We have two small marine propane tanks on board. Our one that we're using currently goes in the propane locker here. So it's stored safely outside of Pivot in case we have a leak. And then we have our extras stored in the flybridge locker, which will go soon. This is where we normally keep our lines, our dock lines, um, easily accessible where we can just grab them and set up the boat when it needs to be. Over here we have our black fenders. I kind of like how they're arranged, um, out of the way, but easily accessible. Here is our throwable uh, safety life sling, easily accessible. We have two extra water jugs. So we have a ton of water storage on board Pivot. It's one of the reasons why we're capable of being off the grid for so long. And we have these two just in case we need some more. But really the extra purpose of these are such that we can take them in Fred 
and fill up without taking pivot in there. So if we're in an area that doesn't have a marina, we can use those. Now to the meat and potatoes of our flybridge, we have our helm station. Now we have a nice big wheel out here. It makes it really easy sitting and cruising and for the long hours that we're on the water uh, because this is a trawler. We do not go fast. Our cruising speed is about six and a half, seven knots, which is like eight miles an hour. That is what we do 6,000 miles in, eight miles an hour. That puts it into perspective for you. We have a compass here. A fun fact is that these compasses are from a Beneteau sailboat, just transplanted. We have our depth finder. We use a Garmin depth finder and chart plotter on board. This is our backup system. Uh, we use Navionics and our iPad for the majority of our navigation. But this has the depth sensor, which our iPad does not have. And it's just another form of redundancy, which is always great. Onboard pivot, we have a single engine and a bow thruster. So it's been definitely a learning experience for how to maneuver this boat, but now we are so comfortable in a variety of different situations. And so we have our bow thruster joystick right here, the shifter, and here's our throttle, and here's our gauges. So we're looking at these gauges all the time. We have temperature gauge, oil gauge, battery monitor, and we also have our RPM listed here. From over here, we have our Raytheon autopilot, our windless switch, and our RAM microphone for all of our VHF communication. We also have a spotlight on pivot, which we've used when cruising at night or in the fog. Um, and that control is here. And it's kind of a, a fun situation where you can, you literally have this little joystick where you can point the, the uh, spotlight. And then we have uh, 120 volt uh, outlets here for charging an I iPad or a MacBook or something. And then over here, we have a 12 volt plug this is for just like we use this to charge our phone or our uh, watch or anything else. It doesn't require a lot of power and we don't need the inverter to charge this, which is nice. A little bit further, we have our Flybridge locker. This is kind of our garage on Pivot. So we have our extra propane tanks. This is our uh, electronics grab bag for charging everything up here. We have our shore power cord. We have some workout equipment in here, along with extra life jackets and our camping chairs. We also have these string lights up here. Uh, we don't use these nearly enough. The main reason is they attract bugs and very rarely are we in a situation where we are not around bugs. Still, they do add a very nice ambiance to pivot. And then we have our Bimini covering here provides a lot of shade. Honestly, we would not be up here ne nearly as often if we didn't have this Bimini cover. It's really large, really protective uh, for us. It doesn't, we don't have any protection from the wind or the rain, which means in inclement weather, we're normally cruising inside, which is perfectly fine. But what it also provides us is a platform for our solar panels. We have four solar panels on pivot. Each panel is 175 watts giving us a total of 700 watts of solar. We've had these panels up here for a year and a half. They're flexible panels and they've worked like a charm. Our captain's chairs are our swivel chairs. So it makes us nice for, you know, entertaining guests or sometimes when we're eating dinner, we'll swap them around and take a look at the view. Especially here in the Benjamins, you can just see so much of the pink granite that makes these islands super special. And it's just gorgeous. Now let's check out the lower part and our decks. Now coming down from our flybridge, we have our decks. And to start off from back to forward, we have this, what we call our jungle gym. The previous owner built this stainless steel like rack. So that way we can lift our dinghy on top. And we found that it's really nice whenever you go into marinas that can be a little stingy on your exact boat length. And so because the dinghy is sitting within our boat limits, we don't get charged additional length costs because our dinghy is hanging off. We have our flagpole. Right now we have line, so that way we can stern tie because we are in the North Channel. We also have our grill, which is really nice because we enjoy many dinners outside, specifically whenever it is hot to keep the heat outside when cooking and not inside in the cabin. Here on our aft deck, we have our lazarette. 
Our lazarette holds our extra anchor, cleaning supplies, wires, cords, cables, extra belts, cleaning supplies, hose. Basically anything extra is in here. This is really another one of our big garages on Pivot. Now on either side of Pivot, we have about one and a half to two foot wide decks. Now these side decks are something that I absolutely love having, especially for the Great Loop. My responsibility on Pivot when we are docking or locking is to take care of this side of the boat and to have complete access with without having to go up and climb down and whatever, I am able to very easily get to each side of the boat without having to think about or compromise my safety. We have three cleats and a handrail, as well as handrails on the main side of pivot, like where the cabins are. So we really have very comfortable walking space to get into the cabin, which is really nice whenever the weather or conditions are a little bit less than desirable. Now on each side of Pivot, both port and starboard, we have boat poles. And that's so that way we have boat poles very easily uh, convenient to whatever side we need the boat pole for. It's not on one side and then we'd have to run over. They're on both sides making it super convenient. Coming up to our bow, we have our anchor. We have our Samson post, windlass, bow pulpit, and our anchor, which is currently holding us in place right now. Our anchor is a Mantis M1 65 pound anchor. Our anchor is sized up two sizes for it to be a storm rated anchor, which makes it so that way we sleep very comfortably at night. We also have a bridle. Right now we are not using the bridle because we have a stern line on and so we don't want that pull. But this bridle is used whenever we are typically anchoring all the time. And this we just hook onto the chain and it allows for the boat to have like a much easier and more comfortable like pull if winds or waves were to come. We have our AGLCA burgee to delineate that we are doing the great loop. We also have 150 feet of chain. One of the additional reasons as to why we sleep so well at night. Our Samson post helps to protect our windlass from our anchor chain. We also have a wash down hose and our wash down hose is sourced from water from whatever waterway we are in. So it is not fresh water from our tanks. Over here we have our forward hatch, which allows for great ventilation as we are sleeping when we are in the V-berth. And we can talk a little bit more about that when we do our V-berth. Now having a dog aboard the boat, full time living with us, doing the Great Loop, we have a pee pad. And if you're interested in how we got Ollie to do her business on the boat, long story short, we didn't go to shore for a week. Ollie learned how to do her business on the boat. If you want to learn more about how we make sure that Ollie is comfortable on the boat, the process that we did to getting Ollie to do her business on the boat, we have a blog post on it which we will link in our description. In both of our cabins we have these solar power vents and this is kind of where they pop out so that way we have constant ventilation in both of these cabins. We also have two paddle boards that we keep on board and it's great for exploring the more shallow areas that we can't really get to with our big boat pivot and it allows us to get a little bit more exercise and as a fun water activity off pivot. Coming back to the aft part of the boat, we have our deck fittings. Now we have two of our water tanks on this side which Elliot will go into further detail when we get to the aft cabin. On the port side we have our electrical or shore power hookup another water tank and one waste tank. Our two diesel tank connections are a bit more forward, like in the mid part of the boat. And we also have another sewage tank that is also accessed near one of those diesel tanks. Without further ado, let's head inside. Our aft cabin has its own entryway and coming down the stairs we have storage and we have a lot of storage on this boat. This is mainly clothes for Jennifer and then we have some paper charts and towels down here. Now Pivot is 12 and a half feet wide, also known as her beam. And so in our two cabins, almost all of that space is utilized. So you can see here above this is the deck space but it's still extra room for sleeping, which gives another probably foot, foot and a half uh, on, on the bunks. This is where Jen and I are sleeping currently. We do swap V-berth and aft cabin um, just 
kind of with whims, you know, just, oh, let's sleep here now. There's like a couple big differences between the V-Berth and um, the aft cabin as far as sleeping wise, but, but one of the big ones is airflow. The V-Berth has a little bit better airflow just because of the massive forward hatch. But we have these two sliding windows on each side, and then this window doesn't open. So there is pretty good airflow. And the beds are pretty big, so I am 6'1", and I can fit in the small of our beds pretty much completely. So my feet are not out, they are up. But when you sleep to a side or to an angle, it's perfectly fine. And we call this area the coffin. It's not the most fun to sleep under, but it is nicely padded. So if you do have that nightmare in the middle of the night, you will be perfectly fine. Each bed has a reading light, which is nice. All the lights on Pivot are LEDs, so very low power which is great because we like to spend days at anchor, even weeks at anchor in some situations. Over here we have the biggest closet in Pivot and all of the doors are all latched on a boat because you know, you're know you frequently wobbling with the, with the waves and you never know what's gonna happen. So they all have to be secured. So it's a hole and then there's a little latch on the inside that you kind of pull with your finger. That's how they work here. So here we have uh, Jen's uh, mainly hanging hanging locker. We have some of our life jackets here. We also keep, it goes all the way back to the hole. It's a huge storage area. And it has a little light in here, which is nice. Here between the two cabins, we have a little floor hatch. Lifting the hatch up, this is where we control all the water that comes from our water tanks. And so we have three water tanks and they're all in the aft cabin. We have two on the port side and one uh, right underneath where you are on the starboard side. So we have up to 130 gallons of water storage here, which lasts us over two weeks. We can basically turn on and turn off the access to any of our water tanks. It's also helpful if a tank gets dirty or if you get bad water in one of the tanks, you're not gonna contaminate the whole system. It's just a really nice situation that we have here. And so this is how we access it all. Coming to the starboard side of Pivot is our biggest bed. And this bed is kind of like a full size bed. It's very custom dimensions, but this is where I'm sleeping currently. And it has a little bit more room than the other side. I can, if I lay at a diagonal, my feet can go fully parallel. And underneath the beds is where we have all of our storage for our fuel filters, our water filters, our impellers, oil filters, that's where I keep these. So I use them pretty frequently. And so this just opens up and boom. You can see our water tank easily on this side. We've marked it for how much water is remaining and this is pretty much full. We're not using this tank right now. And over here we have a little uh, set of chest and drawers. This is just more clothing. We keep some shoes down here. These are where we keep the batteries for our e-propulsion electric dinghy motor and we have an outlet right here. So we, we just plug them in, they both sit here, they're nice and snug when we're underway. It works out great. And underneath this bed, I showed you guys the water tank, but we also have our holding tank and it's 30 gallons and we have two of them on board. I'll show you where the other one is later. And so we never really need to look at those tanks. They kind of just work how they should. Uh, but if we needed to, all of our beds kind of open up on top. We also have this material. This is so our bed stays aerated and we don't get moldy beds. And then uh, we have just hatches. So we can get all the way back there and it's no problem. Now for one of our first two heads on board. And if you don't come from a boating background, a head is also the toilet or the bathroom. It's called that because it used to be at the very front or head of the boat. And it just went overboard in those days, but not anymore. So both of our heads are what's called wet heads, which means that they're a combination of toilet and shower. And there's a shower curtain that goes around to narrow the water down into the basin. And this is the larger of our two heads. This one, we have an electric macerating toilet. So what that means is we just press a button. It pumps water out of the ocean or body water that we're in. Currently we're in the lakes and it uses that to flush the toilet. 
and then it sucks it out at the same time uh, going through a macerator which grinds up all the all the fun stuff and that goes into the whole holding tank waiting for it to get pumped out at a future date once you're in a proper facility. If you're coming from uh, RVs you might know about a gray tank versus a black tank and black tank is the sewage tank. Gray tanks don't typically exist on boats and so what will happen is our sink runs directly overboard and then our shower goes down into the bilge where there is what's called a sump pump which then pumps that overboard. So all of our gray water goes back into the sea water and then but all of the black water goes into the holding tank per local laws. And because of that we do our best to use only biodegradable stuff, um, toothpaste, soaps, so that when it goes overboard we're not actively harming the environment and we're keeping our impact minimal. It's definitely still an impact but we're keeping it as minimized as possible. We're giving you guys the full tour, okay? So I hope you're okay with this, but here's our little button. We have a Dometic sensor in our tank. So basically it'll, that light will turn on whenever our tanks are approaching full, which is very important. You really do not want your tanks to overflow. It's not fun. Not the quietest toilet flush, but it works. Now for the final section of our aft cabin, also called our stateroom, is the ladder leading to the salon. And so this is where Jen stores her shoes, but importantly, this is where our fire extinguisher is, because we, you need to have one in all the cabins of the boat. You know, the fires are one of the most dangerous things to have on board, so being prepared is important. And then underneath where Jen's shoes are, we have another hatch, and this is where we have access to our shaft seal. We can close off all of our cabins. Get this sliding thing, and then one here. Which now brings us to our main cabin, salon, galley, everything else. As we continue into the galley and the salon of the boat, on our port side, we have our galley, which extends from the very back of this section of the boat to the beginning section of this part of the boat. And so here we have our deep freezer. Our deep freezer is huge. Some of the other loopers and boaters are a little incredulous when we tell them that we have this large of a freezer on board. It's a really great aspect to have since we don't always know exactly where the next grocery store is or how easy it is to get the groceries back to the boat. So this is a huge asset for us. So we keep just a lot of food in here. We have this piece of unfinished wood, which does the job. It gives us additional counter space, which usually we keep some pantry items like snack foods that are already opened, grab and go stuff. But right now we have our Stim Pot and we have our Berkey water filter, which is a filter that cleans the water because we're always going from one hose spot to another hose spot. So this just allows us to have reliable, similar tasting drinking water wherever we go. And we have learned from experience that we always put our Berkey in our sink whenever we're cruising. So this is just where it goes whenever we're at anchor or at a marina. Now below, we have a portable heater and a portable fan. Both require 120, so we have to use our inverter, which will go over our electrical system later on in this video. But this does allow us to have either additional cooling and heating depending upon our needs. We also store Ollie's water bowl and food bowl down here, as well as some vinegar, which we use in the bathrooms regularly. Right here we have some storage. This is where we store our silverware. Going down further, we have measuring cups, cooking utensils, knives. The great thing about these drawers is that they go all the way back, so they are very long. and They maximize the space available to us. The last thing that we have is a little cabinet with our trash can and cleaning supplies, and that also goes all the way back, which we've used all of that space. Now we are in the primary section of our galley. Right here we have a Norcol fridge. Our fridge is packed right now because we just went grocery shopping like a day or two ago. But it has a small mini freezer inside and it stores a good amount of food. Um, this refrigerator runs on both 12 and 120, which is excellent for us depending upon our electrical needs. We have cabinets here that lock, so that way during rougher conditions, nothing flies out of the cabinets. And in here we store our coffees, teas, 
and all of our dinnerware. So our plates, bowls, cups, all of that kind of gets stored in here. We have a collapsible drying mat, so that way we're able to maximize the space in case we need all of this area. We're able to collapse it down and, put, and store it away. Usually we have it out though, um, just in terms of daily use. Our sink is fairly deep, which is really nice. Goes about that deep. So it makes washing dishes really easy. We also have a faucet that has a movable head. So we're able to refill our kettle easily or clean out the sink really easily too, which is an awesome feature. Going forward, we have another one of these latches on all the doors that Elliot mentioned earlier and storage, which we use for pantry storage items that we use pretty frequently and they're on metal shells with the slow close feature. So we keep everything from rice, beans, oils, peanut butter, sugar, stuff like that in here, which is really nice and convenient that we don't have to ha like dig deep in to get some of these items. And those shelves also go all the way back trying to really maximize the storage available to us. Here is one of our carbon monoxide alarms, which is for our propane gas stove. If there was ever an emergency uh, with a leak, it would go off and tell us so that way we could figure out the issue. We have a two burner propane stove and a convection microwave oven. And this microwave oven is the typical size of a normal microwave oven in a, a home, but it does have the convection setting, which is similar to an oven, so we're able to cook things like our Thanksgiving meal, but also things like frozen pizza or something like that. So that's really nice. Down here we have storage for pots and pans, and this drawer down here is where we keep a bit of the miscellaneous cooking items. Right here we have a cutting board, and it's just kind of loosely in there. This fits over our stove. This gives us more prep area in our galley. Although I rarely use this. I think I've used this like once or twice because I find that the area that we have is plenty. The last little bit of additional prep area that we have is this cutting board. Have we ever used that? <laughs> and we have never used this. For me personally, I think it'd be kind of a hassle to clean and then to have to store it in here, whereas it can't really air dry in here. But it is an option if that's something you choose and you like. Finally, we have our navigation station, but we use it to store our fruits and vegetables and other produce that we cannot fit into our fridge. We have a little storage drawer for miscellaneous things like... Everybody's got a junk drawer. Yeah, everyone's got a junk drawer. Cords, pens, scissors, random stuff. We have an awesome window that we keep open so often, specifically when we're on Anchor, because on Anchor you're primarily, in this case we're not because we're stern tied, but you're primarily always facing into the wind. And so you have this wonderful breeze that always keeps us really cool on Anchor. We have a box of miscellaneous stuff that we just keep at the helm so that way it has our extra radio, lights, sunscreen, bug spray, whatever we kind of need on the go, we've got it. We also have a portable speaker which we keep inside which we typically bring up to the flybridge very often anytime that we're cruising up there but we keep it here just for daily storage. Now, as we get to the starboard side of our helm station, I will transition to Elliot to go over all of this. Here is where the magic happens. This is our interior helm station. And one of the reasons why Pivot is such a fantastic great loop boat is because we have that interior helm station. You don't get to choose all the days that you're cruising. Today being a prime example, it's a little bit rainy, a little bit overcast. If it starts dumping water on us, we can just come in here and cruise from the comfort inside and I'm sure in November and October when it gets a little bit more chilly it'll be really nice cruising inside. We have everything that we had upstairs except for there's two main differences. One we don't have our autopilot controls down in here they're only upstairs and the second is that we have the key down here. So that's a good thing you have to come into the boat to turn it on but looking at the systems behind the, the wheel uh, we have a lot of our big electrical controls. We have our generator control panel, 
So this turns on Annie. We have our three-way switch to basically run the boat either offshore power, generator, or nothing. We have our inverter control box. So this will tell us or what's currently drawing our amperage down from our AC devices, our normal outlets. And then we also have our DC control panel. So we have our master switch to turn on and off the batteries, as well as the isolation between our starter batteries and our house bank. And then also a ton of different switches for the different systems on board. So turning on and off the refrigerator, the forward lights, the aft lights, and that's all contained right here. We also have our windlass is duplicated down here as well. And we ha also have a DC outlet here. So that's where we'll plug in our phones and watches if we need to charge overnight and we have our inverter off. Since we're inside, you know, we have rain pelting the windows. We have windshield wipers. They do a good job. No complaints there. Now for the helm seat, as you can see, it's a little small. It's like a little short. Well, it flips out. So it's kind of configurable and it does this so that way the walkway is always clear. That flips out. That flips up. These kind of come down a little bit. Oops. And now ready to do some cruising. We have a lot more storage in this area, just like the rest of the boat underneath the helm seat. We have our bar cart, but for us, it's our spice cart. The nice thing about being on this boat is it's really easy to conserve electricity. So we have a few master light switches. Just by this one switch, it turns on all the lights to the main cabin, which is just a little bit more accessible instead of being down there. And we have the same sort of setup in both of our cabins. So you can just turn off all the lights with the master switch, which we leave off most of the time until the evening. And this one is in the perfect location because you come in from a night of debauchery boom lights on and you're good to go although normally we leave a light on for ollie when we leave so now to show you our starboard side of the main cabin we have some hooks as soon as you walk into the boat which is really nice because we hang our hats here so that way we can always make sure that we have some protection as we head out we also he hang our headlamps there so that way they are also at easy access we have our great loop map because inspiration keeps us going is our salon now our salon is our probably most multifunctional used space on the boat so this acts as our office living room dining room and lounge space uh, we have our kitchen table or our desk space however the space is being used at the time it also extends out with there's two little knobs at the bottom side of the table which we just push out and it extends these two levers that act as support when we open the table up and that's on both sides let's see behind me now we have a fairly large table this table actually goes completely flat with the settee so that way it makes a third bedroom essentially um, which we primarily use as our movie theater space and as this goes down we're able to rearrange the cushions put a cushion usually this one on top of the table space you can put blankets out here and we're able to watch TV watch movies very comfortable probably one of the most comfortable beds on pivot in my opinion Below the settee, we have more storage. <laughs> so down here, we have storage for basically just pantry items. And this is primarily used definitely every week, but not necessarily every day. So we have some plastic containers that we use to make sure that they are airtight and sealed, but this space is accessible from the top right here, or through these cabinets and since we have these plastic containers they are accessible this way because we're able to take out the doors and easily grab things from a much larger width so we're able to completely take out the plastic boxes from this position which makes it really really nice and accessible a little bit further aft we have the same blinds on every single window besides our hatches and they just come down and then Bob's your uncle. Back here we have a puppy, a uh, very good boat dog. Um, underneath where Ollie's sitting right now resides our air conditioning. So we have a single AC unit in the boat and we have ducting 
going from basically it cools the main cabin and then it also will cool each individual cabin, the forward and the aft. We only run that off of shore power because our wires aren't up to snuff to run it on the hook. We can also run it on the generator too. Back here we have our travel, boating, and great loop library. So we use some of these books more than others. We have um, our electronic section. So this is where we keep both of our MacBooks, all of our MacBook chargers. Right behind it, we have our game area. So we are games people. We love playing games. It's one of our favorite things to do like in the evening on the boat, especially with friends. We have some deck of cards, a few smaller games. We have Settlers of Catan. Back here, we have all of our camera and gear storage. We have a full video on all the gear that we have on board, so we'll link that above in case you guys are interested. Now moving back to the other technology corner, we have our Vizio flat screen TV. We also have our Wi-Fi router, a little portable travel one, low power. This is the indoor receiver for our WeBoost, which is our cell phone booster. Um, you saw the other one that was on top of the mast. Now coming forward to the V-Birth, I wanted to highlight our handholds. So these are very sturdy. I hold my weight, which is a little bit less than 200 pounds. Um, and this boat is built pretty solidly, which is fantastic. And it's a good thing to have on the loop because you never know when there's gonna be a wake or when there's gonna be poor weather and you need to hold on. And on this boat, there are handholds literally like everywhere, always within arm's reach. There are some handholds. And the other thing that the windows have, besides all of them having blinds, is they all have these meshes um, which basically prevent most of the bugs from coming in, but it gives you a nice safe breeze. Uh, check out the last cabin. Our next space is our V-berth, and this is the most forward part of the boat that has our last and final cabin. Now our V-berth has two beds, they're both twin style beds, and it's a mirror image on either side. Going from top to bottom, we have some vents that are in both in this cabin and our aft cabin that just allow for airflow. So if we ever leave the boat for an extended period of time, like we did when Elliot broke his wrist, we keep these on so that way there's always air circulating through and it can, so it doesn't get musty and like stinky inside the boat. It doesn't have that boat smell. We have a bookshelf, which we're able to, to store all of our like more personal books that we may pick up in the laundromats or neighborhood libraries around the various towns we visit. Each side has a reading light which is really convenient so that way you're not keeping on the main light which is up here throughout the night if you choose to read. Both of the beds are very comfortable. So in the V-Birth there's more length so you can really stretch out. I am 5'9 and I have quite a bit of space from the top of my head to the back and I'm able to extend my feet out to where they're basically parallel with me and I still have additional space. Each side also has a hatch, which we're able to keep open for extra ventilation while we're cruising. One, just to get a little bit of extra airflow from the bow to the stern, but also throughout the night, we're able to also have more airflow, which is really nice. And these are screened in, so bugs cannot get in throughout the night, throughout the day, whatever. As we move forward, we have this awesome forward hatch and this hatch makes it so that way this bedroom is actually my favorite place to sleep because I like it cool at night and when we open this up on anchor we have the most incredible breeze that comes through here this keeps us so comfortable at night it has also a screen so bugs don't come in um, and it's really easy to open with two knobs on either side going more forward we have our anchor chain locker which has all of our anchor chain, which is marked, as well as our wash down pump hose. So that's how we access that. Super easy. Now below the beds, there's additional storage. Now this is where Elliot stores his clothing. All of my clothing is kept in the back in the aft cabin. And this is where Elliot keeps his clothing. We also have a basically a division of heads too. So this is Elliot's head and then my head is in the back. But we use them regularly so that way we manage the black water space appropriately. Now 
Having two cabins and two heads makes this boat a really great, great loop boat because it makes it really easy and comfortable to have guests aboard without having so much additional space. It's a larger boat, but it's not so large that two people can't manage it. So it really does make this like perfect compromise of wanting extra space for, to have guests along throughout our travels, but also not too much that we can't handle just the two of us. So it's a really great size four drawers, two on each side of the V-berth, as well as additional storage down here, which we keep on our starboard side, all of our outdoor activities. So our hammocks, our hiking boots, our snorkel, fins, um, goggles. And then on the other side, we keep Elliot's tools. Below, we have a hatch that leads to our wine cellar, liquor cabinet. It's basically our bilge, but it's where we store a lot of our big bottles of booze because it keeps it at a cooler temperature. Now it is not the same as refrigerated temperature. We understand that, but it is cooler. So we keep it down here and take it out as necessary. And then there's also another hatch right here, which leads into where our bilge pump and our black water tank the forward one is located, so we're able to access them here. And this closet and storage space is where Elliot keeps his hanging clothes, so all of his jackets, shirts, stuff like that is kept in here. And this cabinet space down here is where we keep all of Ollie's stuff. So Ollie's food, her medicine, her treats, her dog toys, extra food, so like the extra large bags of food, it's all kept in here. So this is kind of Ollie's little closet. Similar to the back where we do have an, a 120 plug. Hi Ollie. We have another 120 plug here, but we do turn off our inverter, which we'll go into a little bit more when we get into our electrical stuff. The last bit that we'll show you is our forward head. Now this head is smaller than our aft head, but it does the job just as well. There's hangers on the door, which we keep our towels. It's another wet bath. We have a shower curtain to keep some of the areas dry, like the door and the toilet. So we're able to just, So we're able to Velcro the shower curtain and kind of keep this space dry. And then these walls, they're just fine to get wet. So this bathroom, we have more uh, storage space as well as this sink. It pulls out, so it really maximizes the space, which we really like. And a head, and this head is not electrical. It is a hand, a hand pump head, which we like. We have no problems with, but it's just, it allows us to have the variety of electrical and not electrical on pivot. This bathroom also has another shower head, mirror, all the necessities. The last feature of the V-Birth is that it also encloses completely to make a very private bedroom, just like our aft cabin. So we can extend this out which also gives great extra space whenever we're at the helm station. And we can close the door. So we have now a fully private room, just like the aft cabin. So now that we are back in the salon, let's have Elliot give you a full tour of our engine room and electrical setup. All of our nuts and bolts and pivot are underneath our floors coming to where I spend every single morning on the loop. Uh, down here, checking our oil, our transmission oil, our belt, and our fuel tanks. This is Linda. We only say good things about Linda, okay? Linda is a Ford Lehman Super 135. She's a marinized version of an old tractor engine. So working on this engine is a breeze and parts are available everywhere. Now, like I said, this boat is from 1989. So this is, you know, a 30 plus year old engine and she's been running very well for us. Even though Linda is pretty old, she's still in her infancy, really. She had, we just hit over 2000 hours with her um, just the other day. And these engines can go to 
15,000, you know, if they're well maintained and, and she has been so far. We do our regular oil changes every 200 hours. And then we also have a velvet drive transmission. We also have two starter batteries down here, an alternator which keeps them nice up and brimming with electricity. And then on both sides here, below me, we have our diesel tanks. We have two 150 gallon diesel tanks. We never fill them to capacity. Um, it's one of the things we've learned about an older boat is it's good to give things a little bit of leeway. So we fill them up about, you know, maybe 85% uh, and then we refill them once they're about 30% and pivot runs nice and well just like that. And what's great about these old trawlers is there is so much room to work on them. Not quite as much room as if we had a double uh, twin engines. Uh, because obviously Linda is in the middle, but still I can get all around her. Um, you know, it's nice and comfortable. This is a very easy spot to be in. And you know, not just because I'm limber, but just because there's a good amount of room. On the starboard side, we have both of our Raycor fuel filters that keeps our diesel nice and clean and water free. All of these floor paneling have insulation on the top of them. To limit the noise, but it's you, you know you still know that you're on a uh, you're on an old trawler when it's running, but it's not too bad. All of these floor hatches, you know, we can completely take off of the boat if we need, like this whole thing to be open. That's presumably how I suppose they got the engine in here in the first place, and we've had to do that a couple times when we're filming some video or something. But normally, what I do is I come down here, I do my checks, everything look if everything looks good. Then I come over here and I step up here and I go over there and then I slide this over and now we're on this side. Hmm. There's even more room on this side. I also have some storage back here. This is where I keep our circular saw, our jigsaw and our grinder, which we used a lot a lot when we were in Crisfield, Maryland and replaced our decks. Now, like I said earlier, our max speed with Linda is about six and a half knots. And at that speed, we're burning about two gallons an hour, maybe 2.2. Um, and then we can go a little bit slower, five and a half knots. And then we're only burning a gallon and a half an hour, which for a boat, a diesel engine is fantastic really good fuel economy and it's one of the reasons why pivot such a good great loop boat is because our fuel bill is quite a bit less compared to other boats fuel is still one of our highest expenses on the loop and if you want to know specifically how much the loop costs make sure you check out our great loop expense reports where we share after every single month what is everything on the loose call loop costs and diesel is still a big part of that the other thing that makes Pivot a fantastic boat for the loop is our draft, which Jennifer mentioned earlier was three and a half feet. So being a single engine, we have our prop shaft come out of the boat and it's fully protected with our keel. We have a keel underneath it. And so that situation of having a fully protected keel and a very shallow draft, three and a half is on the shallow side, means that we can get into a lot of nooks and crannies that you couldn't get to, into on other boats and areas where it's pretty shallow on the loop which is like four and a half and five feet in certain sections, we're not worried about it. We're not gonna hit anything. And the other thing is that, you know, the waterways that you travel on the loop are very wide ranging. And so there can very frequently be shoaled in sections as there is. When that four and a half or five foot section on the chart is actually three feet and you come onto something, you're not going to bend a propeller or really injure your running gear which should lead to a big cost and then having to get hauled out and all that, you're, you're just hitting it on the keel, which is great. One of the things that we've learned specifically on the Intracoastal is you're not a captain of the Intracoastal until you've run aground. It's just one of the things that happens super shoaly and the tides are huge. So inevitably you kind of hit, hit sand or hit mud and we've done it a couple times. Um, and they say there's, you know, people that have run aground and people haven't, have, haven't run aground yet, but um, that situation with the protected propeller under our keel, it's a bee's knees. We also have our main fuse block down here, which is something that's very important to have and sized correctly on your boat. There she is, 
pivot in all her glory. That's our boat tour. I think we went over every last inch, nook and cranny of pivot. <laughs> so if there is something that we missed and we don't think we did, please let us know in the comments below with your questions. And we'll be happy to explain anything in further detail. One um, piece that we didn't mention, up in the Flybridge locker we have our hardware Nebo link. And Nebo is a very integral part of the Great Loop. It's how we stay connected with all of our Looper friends. And that little hardware device is wired into our ignition. So whenever we turn on Pivot, it starts recording. A daily, it, it, it's a captain's log, along with a daily and a monthly summary of our travels. Uh, but most importantly, it shows where Pivot is. It is a fantastic asset to have and highly recommend getting it for the Loop. Yeah. Now, we also have a ton more resources on our website. I will list all of the blog posts with the website in this video description. As always, tomorrow is another cruising day on America's Great Loop. We're enjoying our last week here in the North Channel. We are going to go to another beautiful anchorage. Uh, it's just been beautiful anchorage after beautiful anchorage after beautiful anchorage here lately. And uh, so we hope you guys subscribe and stay tuned for the, for the future videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Post credits, the Benjamins are kind of a special place. Like being able to have fires like right next to the boat on this beautiful pink granite is special. And having our little river otter chase for uh, um, rocks is awesome. We have another fire tonight. Pivot in the background, some local beer. This is Ode Emin. Which is the that's the Ojibwe word for strawberry, and Ojibwe is the language of the First Nation here on Manitoulin Island. And this is from Manitoulin Brewing. Cheers! Thanks for watching. We also hang our LED headlight lamps, flashlight, headlight, headlamps, headlamps, headlamps. Hi, Roy. This is Pivot, and we're in the Benjamins. Relay, please. This is Pivot, and we're in the Benjamins. Pivot, Pivot is in the Benjamins. This is the Daily Cruisers Net on Channel 71 with Roy Eaton. We've been listening to it for the past few days. <laughs> in perfect show and show fashion, we have decided to start filming today right when it started raining. It is not bothering Ollie though. She is just loving to go for rocks. She's like a kid in a candy store. We're a dog in the North Channel with fresh water, fresh clear water, and a ton of rocks. She's in 7th Heaven. We're not recording anymore, are we? Oh, I am. Recording all of it. Is it good if we get it on? What? What? It is. Alright, birds don't fly like that. <laughs> that's not a that's not a V formation. Something is towing something. And it's disappearing as it gets away.